Let the digital clock. So this is this is the position of the of lawyer Martin Pebo. Yes, the special prosecutor has put out a verdict. In his view, he's not taking the verdict of the OSP hook, line, and sinker holding. The fact that the OSP says no evidence was found doesn't mean nothing happened. And to, to that extent, we shouldn't be pushing this argument of John Mama being innocent too much. What is Martin Pebu's profession? He's a lawyer. What does he deal with in court? It's evidence. So what are we talking about? If you were to be a fetish priest, then I would have taken what he's saying with some seriousness. He is my senior at the bar. Anytime I have challenges, I reach out to him. I have always relied on his superior practice experience relative to the law. I have no doubt that this morning he's not speaking as the lawyer that I know. Why do you say so? Because, you see, our work entails evidence. When Mr. Ma in fact, I'm doing a matter with him. When we go to court, we call witnesses. And they come and produce evidence. We cross-examine them on it. And after that, the judge makes a decision. Ask him whether in court, he only comes and sings praises and psalms and leaves the, the, the courtroom. No! He comes with his bag. We bulky documents. That's what he does. This morning, he's not a lawyer. Why? He, Is it because he's taking a, a, no, no, a different no, 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 position no. Because from what no, you thought he's he should? Not. And he knows my reverence and respect for him. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. On the second day of February 2020, in a letter written by Eugene Ahe, Mr. Akufuado instructed or directed the special prosecutor then, Mr. Martin Amidu, okay, to investigate. And, 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 and you see, I would have wished that you um, put the Akufuado um, um, statement by Eugene Ahe for, for me. I just... Mm -hmm. No, we'll, we'll put that on the screen as we go on. So kindly, we'll kindly do that for me. Okay. So this is the letter. The heading. Inquiry into bribery of Ghanaian officials in the military aircraft deal. Simple matter. Concluding, President Akufado has taken notice of the judgments and implications and has referred it to the Office of Special Prosecutor to corroborate with the UK blah, 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 blah. The, to determine the complicity or otherwise. It was a direct reference from Mr. Akufuado. It was not a platform to speculate or make conjecture. That's exactly what my senior this morning has been doing. And you see, when there are facts, you cannot say I'm expressing my opinion on a fact. It's a fact, it's a fact. It is evidence, it's evidence. Where there is evidence, then you can then do your interpretation of the evidence. What evidence exists? Now, by law, we have set up an institution called the Special Prosecutor. And in fact, he, Martin, Amidu, uh, 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 Martin Pebu, when he had reason that the persons at the Northern Development Authority had engaged in wrongdoing, he went to the Special Prosecutor. Why didn't he himself just go to court? He believed in the work. Ask him whether he had not been to the Tamale court to go and give evidence. When he went to the Tamale court, was it not evidence and testimony that he offered and produced documentary evidence? So, Martin, what are you doing this morning? This is not you. Uh, but, uh, so, so, but, so what, what is the but, problem with the position he takes that to the extent that OSP says no evidence was found? No, I am doesn't saying necessarily that. mean see, that see, nothing see, was see, done. So see, that's that's, that's all what of, he's no, saying. All of us here, mm -hmm. mm, when you assign somebody, you give the person terms of reference. Yes. It is the president who referred the matter to the special prosecutor. And when he did so, he gave the terms what he wanted, a determination of the complicity of the named individuals. 
At the time when Mr. Akufado made those reference to the special prosecutor, he had no doubt at all who GOG1 was, who the intermediary. So it was never part of the inquiry. He, he had no doubt. He had, no, he had doubt. no doubt. But at least until now, we, we, there was some contention about who government official one is. No. If you read the Crown Prosecutor's uh, the judgment mm -hmm. by the, uh, 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 the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, mm -hmm. if you read the Crown Court's judgment... Have the identities of GOG1 been revealed? You see, now this is where it gets even interesting. The Crown Court categorically stated that it will never be fair, okay, mm -hmm. to find anybody guilty when the person has not been heard. Fundamentally, and Martin preaches that philosophy that never accuse a person who you have not heard. And so, the Crown Court by Dame Victoria made the point that these named individuals have not been heard. That the only thing that we have before us is by seeking to protect his reputation by, you know, as it were, like we always say, mm. throwing his officials and other persons under the bus. First of all, what has brought about this whole thing is that Airbus and his rival, boy, they go out to look for seals. And in so doing, what usually happens is that they use all kinds of methods to get seals. And so if you look at the Deferred Prosecution Agreement, even private airlines and their airplane purchases were all featured in it. Now, from Boeing, which basically complained of unfair business practice by Airbus, their conversation is that they believe that it is because of these commissions that are paid. Mm -hmm. That is why Airbus is getting a lot of airplanes sold to countries and companies. Mm -hmm. That is what happened. Now, if you read the report, the original report, it makes the fundamental distinction that in the absence of hearing these individuals, it would be unfair prejudice to, you know, to name them. But if you look at the characterization and the time period, it was mm -hmm. obvious what they were referring to. Mm -hmm. And so when Mr. Akufuado referred this matter on the 2nd of February 2020, his intention... So we have that letter, the 2nd of February 2020 letter that you make reference to. Okay. Um, th that, that was signed by Eugene. This is it. The attention of the President of the Republic has been drawn to a 31st January 2020 judgment of the Crown Court at Southwark in the United Kingdom between the Director of the Serious Fraud Office and Airbus SE, in which the European Multinational Aerospace Corporation has been fined $3.9 billion for the payment of bribes to secure deals in five countries, including Ghana. According to the statement of fact in the case between 2009 and 2015, quote, a number of Airbus employees made or promised success-based commission payments of approximately 5 million euros to intermediary five who is said to be a close relative of a high-ranking elected Ghanaian government official, government official one. Significantly, government official one was a key decision maker in respect of government of Ghana aircraft orders. It goes on essentially, the, the, the concluding point, President Kofado has taken notice of the judgment and its implications and has referred it to the Office of Special Prosecutor to collaborate with his UK counterparts to conduct a prompt inquiry to determine the complicity or otherwise of any Ghanaian government official, past or present, involved in the said scandal, and to take the necessary legal action against any such official as required by Ghanaian law, signed UGIN. So what Akufado wanted was clear. And let me also make this fundamental point. Remember that as at the 2nd of February, when Mr. Akufado referred this matter, his main contender in the 2020 election was President John Dramani Mahama. You see, it was a playbook. Remember that, as at that time in the US of A, hmm? President Trump had called the Justice Department to subject the son of then candidate Biden to criminal investigation relative to his dealing in Ukraine. And that was to provide then uh, President Trump the folder on the campaign platform to continue to use that as, you know, like the sword of Damocles on the campaign. 
And so for the NPP in 2020, when this judgment came, it was fair for them politically to get their main political contender in the election, that is John Mahama, subjected to criminal investigation. Whether the outcome is good or not, it gives them the folder on the campaign platform to say that our opponent is being investigated. So it was purely for politics. And that is why, if you recall, in 2020, Mr. Martin Amidu issued a statement and stated that he was not, and he could see through the politics and say, look, he was going to defer the investigation until after the election. I remember vividly, either Bedir too or so, responding to Mr. Martin Amidu that it does not lie in his mouth to make that determination. Mm -hmm. These are matters that should be settled. Now, I am making the point that if you read the special prosecutor's report, mm -hmm. as delivered by Mr. Kisi Ejaben, and I want to salute him for the courage and professionalism demonstrated, because I appreciate the current climate we find ourselves in, the political pressure, the attacks on him when he did the Cecilia Dapa investigation. Somebody could have just decided that, okay, no, let me buckle and allow whatever it is to go through. That extraordinary courage ought to be applauded. That said, I want to go to paragraph 6-7. Six, 6-7. Seven. Six, seven. Yes. Okay. So no, uh, before then, I'll go to 6-5. Uh, 6-5 uh, six, five. Six, five says, the OSP investigation found no evidence that former President John Mahama was involved or played any role, and it's going to be on the screen, played any role in the procurement and maintenance of the agency relationship between Airbus and Foster and his associates in respect of the purchase by the government of Ghana of military transport aircraft from Airbus. And it appears to the OSP that the direct communication and meeting between former President Mahama and officials of Airbus to close the deal were actuated by good intentions on the part of the former. I mean, that's what so, have on the so then. like we always say lawyers, we say that it is a binary conversation. It is either zero or one. Martin knows that. Now, because it is either zero or one, in the courtroom and for criminal investigation, it is either the set of facts exists or it doesn't. And that is why we call it evidence. Now, the, the special prosecutor is saying that I have investigated, I have gone through emails, I have gone through communication. I find no evidence that H.G. E. John Dramani Mahama was involved or played any part. Then you say, no, I reject the no evidence. You don't provide any substitute beyond the speculation and conjecture. I cannot, with the little training I have in law, accept that proposition from you because that is not the law. At this point, it could mean something else. Now, again, the OSP founds at uh, paragraph 6 7. 6 7, you say. And yes. 6 7 says the OSP found no evidence that suggests that the involvement of Foster as an intermediary, and that's going to be on the screen shortly, the involvement of Foster as an intermediary of Airbus and the direct communication and meetings between former President Mahama and officials of Airbus to close the deal between Airbus and the government of Ghana amounted to any corruption and corruption-related offense in respect of which the OSP has a mandate? Absolutely. Do you know, and what Martin didn't tell us, is that even the relationship, the, 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 the agency relationship between Foster and Airbus, subsequently, Airbus commissioned a consultant to do further due diligence Upon that discovery, they decided to sever that relationship. That is in the OSB report. So that is where I quoted earlier in asking so, the question so of... So even of, of, they, of, of, of when they subsequently Martin found Pribble. out, they didn't even say that that relationship in and of itself was bad. They only felt that it could raise suspicion. And therefore... The consultant who worked on that due diligence recommended. So the subsequent engagement with Airbus had nothing to do 
with the company that Foster had any interest in it. And, and well, How this, was a, this was a part of the report that I read to Lawyer Mount, but he still questions the OSS conclusion on this matter. You're referring to paragraph 6.16. 6.16 says it also appears to the OSP that mm -hmm. the relationship between Airbus and Foster and his associates was neither one of nor peculiar to the Airbus Ghana deal. Airbus had in place similar business models partnerships with Foster and his associates in respect of the uh, business promotions in other African countries before Airbus. Um, Ghana see, transaction. See, let me tell you this. It goes on these, and two, on. these two, US and UK, the Europeans have Airbus. The Americans have Boeing. Boeing felt that Airbus was making more sales than they were doing. Okay. And so decided that, look, let the American authorities investigate the basis on which they were making more sales other than them. So this was like the fight between two elephants. And this individual just got caught up in it. But you see, in good conscience, the UK court, the Crown Court, after the deferred prosecution agreement and the adoption of same by the Crown Court, they were clear in their minds that it was fundamentally untenable to pass judgment on a person when you have not heard him. And that is why Akufuado felt that there was an opportunity to harvest the inherent dislike Martin Amidu had for the NDC, for obvious problems he had with the party in the past, to exploit that personal, you know, uh, uh, um, um, maybe misgivings that he has with the NDC by referring the matter to him. But Martin Amidu smartly saw that Akufado was not interested in the national interest, but his own political survival in the 2020 election, and smartly said, I am not going to be put into this 2020 election. So I will defer the investigation until the next year, when the election outcome would have been decided. Then I'll do. Then it was within that same period that he decided to do the corruption risk assessment on the Ejapa deal, which resulted in the reference of Akufado as the mother serpent and eventually he resigning. So if you go through the report, particularly paragraph 6, um, the 612 that you just referred to, mm -hmm. the OSB thoroughly, having gone through the entire report, came to the irresistible conclusion that he finds no evidence. That is what it is. He says he finds no evidence. And let me say this. We have always been consistent. That having read the deferred prosecution agreement and the judgment of the Crown Court as early as 2020, our conclusion is consistent with the final findings by the special prosecutor. But for the and for me, and for me, mm -hmm. I have heard Martin make the point that this matter, it doesn't... Uh, um, well, he says international transactions of this nature don't end like this. You see, it, it, you see, it, you see. Other aspect of it could no, come up you again. See, you see, in Ghana, we went to Parliament and passed the Special Prosecutors Act, and even for corruption-related offences under Act 29, we decided to reference all of them to the OSP. So, as we speak today, in Ghana, the Special Prosecutor has the exclusive power to make that determination. Two, he says international transactions of this nature. First of all, Adam Foster, he lives in the UK, right under the nose of the serious fraud office. From 2020 to date, nobody had asked him that, Mr. Adam Foster, come to us. We want to interrogate you. That is not their interest. So I do not know where Mr. Uh, uh, my senior Kwebu uh, is getting this <laughs> idea that something else can come out of this uh, investigative work. And then quickly, and, 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 and in, so for I'll, the MPP, I'll, I'll, they make the point that to the extent that the undisclosed infamous government official, one identity is now known, and that is your flag bearer, John Mahama. That, that vindicates the position they have taken all the while, that indeed there was some untoward 
action that took place. Now we know who can government, you, can you, government can you, official can you, one can, is. No, can you put out the second February 2020 letter out there? The, the, the letter we put on the screen yes, earlier. Can you let's, highlight it again for me? Yeah, let's put up this. If you the, look at that, that letter, letter mm -hmm. Mr. Akufuado never asked the SP to go and make a determination who he says significantly one. government official one was a key decision maker in respect of government of no, Ghana first, airport orders. first first up there a close according a to close the relative of a high ranking elected in Ghanaian Ghana government public official. officials that are elected are either MPs yes, or, or the president the president so Mr Akufuado and the MPP had never been in doubt this is an afterthought. What no, Akufuado as you indicated, on, could have what been an No, what Akufuado wanted is paragraph, the very last paragraph. The last paragraph. The very last one. Look, mm -hmm. determine the complicity. That is what Akufuado wanted. Mm -hmm. And for government officials, past or present, involved in the said and take necessary legal action against such official. As required by law. Now listen to the special prosecutor. Further actions. The special prosecutor had directed the closure of the investigation X on the face of Akufuado. Two, the special prosecutor will not initiate criminal proceedings against Akufuado. Shame on you. The special prosecutor has also directed authorized officers to rescind the May 30th warrant of arrest. That is the conclusion. That is what Akufuado wanted. And what? that is what the SP had given him. Now, you see, I listen to you carefully. And I want to make this point. John Dramani Mahama has subjected himself to the laws of this country. For the past seven years, almost eight months, he had lived right here in this country. He had been subjected to the requirement of due process. I want to use your platform to make this point. Let nobody tomorrow, let nobody tomorrow raise the question of witch hunting. If any relative, past or present, associated with any president whatsoever, is invited. Now, what is not in doubt? Can Akufuado now? Subject himself to the level of scrutiny that he has subjected H. E. John Dramani Mahama and his family members to. Okay. Like they are can't say, Oh, we of one son. Now, why was your one son? Emre Eba. Okay, Mesano, so uh, I mean, from the anti corruption perspective, looking at the details of this report, thorough or is still. As lawyer Matic Bebo says, such international transactions of this nature don't end this way. The fact that the OSP didn't find any evidence in his view doesn't necessarily mean that nothing happened. But then again, the details of the report gives specific indications of the involvement or otherwise of the persons who were mentioned or allegedly supposed to have benefited from this deal. The OSP has clear them all of any wrongdoing and put a verdict to it. Thorough or at least room for some more questions. Uh, I would like to commend the Office of the Special Prosecutor for doing a, a very good job. I think that this is a landmark report and we should not ignore the significance. Uh, this is a report that was triggered by the sitting president on the former president and you have an institution of state that had the courage to do the investigation and to provide a report exonerating the former president at a time when the sitting president was still in office. Um, and I think that this adds to our democratic experience uh, and it's a good governance credential we should not ignore. Mm. I find that the report provides for me a substantive chronology of events. Mm -hmm. And it is in the chronology of the events that you can arrive at the conclusion that the former president is truly exonerated. Because to the extent of the negotiations around the transaction, mm -hmm. these occurred 
substantively and were concluded before the entrance of uh, Foster Mahama. Mm -hmm. To all extents, at the point he came in, uh, the, the discussions did not involve, let's say, fixing what products should be purchased and the value that should be expended, etc. And it's to that extent that the OSP is able to establish that there is no evidence that, you know, uh, there was some undue underhand influencing that went on or a conflict of interest or an abuse of the entrusted power uh, that had been given to the uh, vice president or, at the time. Now, I think that we need to find middle ground. I, I disagree with uh, lawyer Tamaklu when he <laughs> says, uh, uh, shame on you, etc. I, I think that we should always hold in high esteem any president. I would have found and had great difficulty if the president of the nation at the time this information was in the international space, took no action. The letter you put on the screen, I think, was well written. I don't find anything there that seemed to unduly try and suggest that uh, uh, the former vice president or uh, president had done anything wrong. I think it was a fair letter says establish the complicity or otherwise, I think it was the right thing to do. The thing we could check would be the timing. Was this letter issued soon after the international news broke? Or was it issued at a time where clearly we can say, no, this was only about the election, you know. I think that Mr. Martin Amidu took the right decision at the time not to create any more heat in the country by deferring investigation. But I think that this letter by the president was important. I would expect that any president who comes in, and so if you come into power, you have the right to do the same, because what you are doing is you are doing it on behalf of the citizens of this country and promoting our interest in ensuring that the right thing is done. I see nothing wrong with this letter. I think it was intention to find out, is there complicity or not? Mm -hmm. The process has been followed. The OSP has reported there is no evidence of that. Less give that credit to the former president. I think that uh, it is coming at a time where, uh, in an election season, mm -hmm. he should be happy about it, and we are happy for him. Let's not begin to try and suggest that this uh, report, I, I, I don't think that the MPP trying to say it wasn't a thorough job is also fair. Well, well, well the, the MPP says, essentially, I mean, the Deputy General Secretary uh, described this initially as, as a lazy job. Now, that's not true. It's a lazy job. That's the absolutely the, not you, true. You don't agree? No, 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 no. Why is that? It is because the report provides you the chronology, tells you how people came in, establishes, for example, that Foster already was doing this on a commission-based model, which was performance-based. He was only give, being paid at a time where he had brought the results they intended. And you can also find that Airbus by itself, within, uh, what, was it two months after discovering that there was an issue, they themselves terminated the contract. Who would, I mean, this is even before the investigation. It tells you that everybody involved in this chain was mindful of the potential conflict of interest and tried to take action. Mm -hmm. If it was about just giving the money, they would have been doing other things which were not formal, engaging a consultant to investigate their own processes and then that consultant recommending that terminate. You don't do that if it's just about paying bribes. <laughs> so look at the logic in the report and draw the conclusions. Uh, this kind of extreme positions don't get us anywhere. What is important is mm -hmm. that going forward, our presidents and vice presidents and public officers, as recommended by the uh, special prosecutor, between you and your, your handlers, you either declare their interest or you recuse yourself. And we have too much of that repeatedly going on. Board chairs, chief executives, not apparently clear in their minds about what is conflict of interest and the ethical implications about it. It probably also points out to the couple which uh, this government has failed to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, another opportunity here for them to understand that the conduct of public officers' bill is a critical tool. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, we have a lacuna because we don't have it properly codified. Mm -hmm. And then if you go into court, there'll be issues. But I think that this report was an excellent piece of work. Kudos to the OSP and all those who did the work over the four years. And, and thank you for giving us confidence that some institutions of state are still doing their work uh, and are not afraid, will not, we, we, we will be able to speak without fear or favor to either of the key parties involved in such situations. Well, but the OSB, and I, I hear you make reference to the issue of conflict of interest and so on. If you look at the OSB's report, 
it says, there's the observations, and I quote, it ought to reasonably to have occurred to former President Mahama and the government of Ghana that the familial relationship between the former president and Foster, that's his brother, were bound to raise reasonable suspicions of improper conduct and dealings. How much weight can be put on this aspect of the report? Because the NDC takes a position as though this, this does not necessarily, as the OSP captured it, does not, because he goes on to make the point that the familiar relationship did not influence the transaction. Mm. So how much weight would you put on this aspect of the report? A, a lot of weight. I think that there's a cultural context where we don't seem to take these international best practices seriously. Um, and uh, yes, the party communicators, I, was, I think was it on Joy yesterday uh, with Sami Jemfi and, uh, two days ago, and he, was, he still took that stance that nothing wrong. And, and I, well, we love them well, but when, the when they're on they, their platform. The speaking, context they take is that to the extent that they did not influence the, their transaction. I, I don't think that that's the right way to look mm -hmm. at it. I think the right way to look at it is that this is international best practice. How do we prevent for it from happening? So concede. Because if that were not the case, there would have been no legitimate basis for the president to refer a matter to the OSP and for the OSP to spend four years. So spare us having to spend another four years by taking this issue seriously. And they should not just take entrenched positions. Uh, I keep reminding both parties and others that, look, they are neutrals. At the end of the day, elections are won because of the neutrals, that 10, 15 percent who add up to your core base. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't disenfranchise us, don't antagonize us by taking entrenched positions that don't move this country forward. It is useful for us to have a situation where our public officers are mindful of potential conflict of interest. It's a constitutional matter. The constitution places that obligation on public officers not to place themselves in situations where there could be potential conflict of interest, not even actual conflict of interest. So they should not talk in that matter, it's in that manner. It is a constitutional uh, obligation on, on, on the part of such uh, officers. So I think that the OSP's recommendation that uh, they need to pay attention to this is important. And it's important in the context that repeatedly our political elites, our political parties and public officers do not pay enough attention to the issues of conflict of interest. And this is an opportunity to then begin to say, look, let's do things differently. So, so conflict of interest in those three levels may be real, apparent, or perceived. Absolutely. And, and all of this should be of concern. It cannot be wished away. No, no. Because even the issue of apparent, there's a constitutional position that don't, you need to assess the situation and make sure you don't even place yourself where there is a potential for apparent, not even actual. So mm -hmm. you need to be mindful. And uh, they cannot claim that uh, because there was no actual, therefore uh, this was a cry uh, or a storm in a teacup. That is not the situation that is highlighted or underscored by the Constitution. That is not in line with international best practice. And let us not begin to seem to take entrenched positions when we ought to be rather promoting a progressive approach that brings change. But the OSP's report, as you've seen it, answers all the questions for you. It it's does it. answer all the questions. I think it was extremely thorough. I think that the chronology of events, uh, and you should even listen to the statements by Foster Mahama, the work he had done in the space. He had a private license, uh, was flying. He had done work in Kenya, you know, had had significant successes. And then when it was terminated, it also affected his credibility, and that was a, it, it injured him. He was really upset about that. Mm -hmm. That, look, a lot of the work he had done was based on professional work, and he ought to be credited that, and this should not just have been, you know, done. So, let's, if we've not read thoroughly, we can just, you know, speculate and make comments. Uh, and I know my, my brother Martin is just trying to, to, to raise the bar. Uh, <laughs> we understand that. Uh, we want to make sure that whoever takes the reins next, whether it's the same or a change, uh, they don't think that we are satisfied with just the status quo. Change must come, and there must be significant change to move this country forward. And, and so, Leah uh, Tamaklo, so that, that position about this issue of the conflict of interest, no, not necessarily conflict of interest that the special prosecutor raises, um, that concern that he raises about the reasonability that should have been brought to bear to the extent that those familial ties between the former president and Foster were bound to raise reasonable suspicions of improper conduct and dealings. 
that, that is something that certainly must also be, be, be taken into consideration in thinking about going forward and doing things right the next time. You see, as uh, my senior brother Sananu rightly pointed out, we are building a governance system, a governance system subject to continuous improvement. What is important is that if you read the report, the OSP suggests that it's like going forward. These are red flags that ought to be looked at yes. and properly examined. Those matters will be taken in good faith. I will not sit here in a grandstanding you know, uh, uh, position. Say, look, this report is supposed to provide a guide mm -hmm. for future. So that tomorrow, all other persons will be measured relative to the standard set by this report. So when the OSP says, in future, certain things ought to be avoided, I will not approbate and reprobate the same report. Like he pointed out, right-thinking people who are watching us this morning wants to be sure what are the safety measures that will be put in future transactions. Mm -hmm. We do know that issues of conflict, when they do come up, it doesn't mean that you should not actually participate. What it simply says is that you should disclose your interests mm -hmm. before the decision is taken. In some instances, it even allows you to recuse yourself. You understand? And so these are measures, and I'm happy, and H.G. E. John Ramani Mahama had consistently raised the issue of code of conduct for public officers. So, it is a matter that is serious and is on the table in our forward march mm -hmm. in fighting graft, corruption, bribery, or any other thing. So those matters will be thoroughly considered. But the conclusion ought to be made clear that JM's brother, and like uh, my, my, my senior Senandu pointed out, is a man who, in all of this, had become the greatest loser. Because while this thing was pending, imagine from 2020, when they went to the court for the, Red, uh, the Interpol arrest warrant, among other things, it definitely affected his ability to do business. It definitely affected his life. In fact, I do know that in one particular instance, one of them had a family, you know, dead or something, and he couldn't because of the red alert by Interpol. So these are matters that have affected individuals at that personal level. You see? And so when you, 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 you have a situation where some of these things brings finality and relief to those individuals, you should not leave it lightly. And so okay. any right. attempt to bastardize this, uh, uh, what shall I say, report will be so untold. And, and just a quick response to the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. He says that the judgment by a so Dame since Victoria... Since you're making reference to that. Yes. Yes. The position, aside from the fact that in the, for the MPP, now knowing who government official one is, is enough vindication for them, the position that they took. They also make the point that to the extent that a court of competent jurisdiction had put out a particular decision or ruling, it does not, the OSP's position or the OSP's report does not take preeminence over the ruling of a court of competent jurisdiction. This is Haruna Mohamed, who is the Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. Take a look. There is any clearance in here. The point is that he said that Mahama is the government official one. What he wrote is his investigative report. And I don't think that investigative report has a superior record over a court judgment. The judgment of the court has not been appealed. The judgment of the court has not been reviewed. So the judgment still stands. An opinion of an investigative body does not supersede a judgment of a superior court of jurisdiction. So this is an opinion of him because he's incapacitated to move on for prosecution. And he's saying that he did not 
and he clearly indicated in his report that he didn't get the, all the facts to the matter. So if you don't get, yes, so if he did not get all the facts to the matter, how did you know there was no payment? So if it is that the payment was done on a fact that you don't know, that's why we always have three sides to a person. The point is that he hates to be called government official one. He, he, he forgets his communication strategy and style to understand that government official one is a corrupt individual in the ruling of the UK. We relied on the, a competent court of jurisdictions ruling to know that no, the man we know to be corrupt in Ghana has also become an international corrupt individual. Mm. And that so that's how the moment. So that, that's what you wanted to no, do. Was that what he offensive? has not even read the investigative report. His boss, hmm? Akufado, who referred the matter in 2020 to the SP to investigate, if his boss knew that it was a judgment of a court, why did he ask the SP to investigate it? Per his logic. Why do you entertain such people? He doesn't but even know. You were making reference to it. He, 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 he doesn't even we, we, understand. We needed to hear exactly no, no, no. the context Look, you of see, what he you has see, said. He doesn't even understand what he's talking about. What do you mean? Exactly. His own bosses. The letter again. Can you put the letter there? As you go on, we'll put it. If, if per his logic, it's a judgment. It's a judgment. Why did Akufado ask the SP to investigate? Why didn't Akufado rather appeal it? Or ask for a review of the judgment. He asked for criminal investigation into bribery because he knew that the Crown Prosecutor, uh, 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 what do we call the Crown Court, headed by Right Honorable Dame Victoria Sharp, did not reach the conclusion. Yeah. And he wanted to know the complicity. Last paragraph of the letter. So this Haruna Mohammed. Is it Haruna Mohammed? Yes, it's a general, deputy general secretary of the. So he has not been. You, you, you take, look, so that you see, you, you, see. you made reference to him. So I just needed to. Regrettably, exactly what regrettably, he, said. he had not read. So look at paragraph. Look at paragraph three one. Yes. It says, "Government approved judgment of the Crown Court dated or delivered on 31st January 2022." That is what it is. But the judgment said, "These individuals have not been heard." We've only heard from the part of Airbus. Right. Airbus desirous of protecting his reputation. And so it will be unfair to impute criminality into the conduct of these named individuals. It is on that basis that Akufado in the last paragraph, please go to the last, conduct a prompt inquiry to determine the complicity or otherwise. Can he send this to the Deputy General Secretary of the MP? Okay. He needs to read this. So he right. doesn't even appreciate what he's responding to, unfortunately. Maybe uh, next time he should spend more time reading than L speaking. Lawyer Godwin Edwin, Tamako, thank you. Nana Ohenin to have a take on this matter. And in fact, Lawyer Martin, people are still with us on Zoom. I have to go for a quick break. When I'm back, you'll have your take on this matter. And then, and then a few other thoughts on this as well. This is key point. Stay with us. We'll be back after this quick break. My guests are still with me in the studio.